Ascites is an abnormal buildup of fluid in the peritoneal cavity and is often seen in the setting of liver disease. The specific definition for ascites is more than 25 milliliters of fluid in the peritoneal cavity, but oftentimes we see a lot more than that. First of all, let's look at the abdomen. This is a sagittal view, and the peritoneal cavity is this section colored in yellow. It's formed by a serosal membrane called the peritoneum. The parietal peritoneum is in red, while the visceral peritoneum is in blue. You can see the retroperitoneal space in green. So how do we end up with fluid buildup in this cavity, and how do we find out what caused it? We can start by looking at what the acidic fluid is made of. It includes proteins such as albumin, lipids, bile acids, and sometimes white blood cells. We analyze the fluid by taking a sample of the fluid via paracentesis, and then we can look at what's known as the serum ascites albumin gradient. This is a test where we compare the albumin concentration in the acidic fluid with the albumin concentration in the serum of the patient. The formula is that the serum ascites albumin gradient is equal to the concentration of albumin in the serum minus the concentration of albumin in the acidic fluid. If the serum ascites albumin gradient is greater than 1.1 mg per deciliter, it's defined as a high serum ascites albumin gradient, while a low gradient would be less than 1.1 mg per deciliter. The reason the serum ascites albumin gradient is useful is because it shows us what's occurring with the starling forces between the acidic fluid and the serum. It shows us whether the imbalance is due to hydrostatic pressure imbalance or oncotic pressure imbalance, which are caused by different pathologies. Ascites with a high serum ascites albumin gradient tells us that fluid is being pushed out of circulation, causing an increase in the concentration of albumin in the serum, because albumin is normally too large to pass through the peritoneum, while the concentration of albumin in the acidic fluid is quite low. This, therefore, is a hydrostatic pressure imbalance. If we see ascites that has a low serum ascites albumin gradient, we know that the concentrations of albumin in the acidic fluid and in the serum are similar, which means that the peritoneum is more permeable than usual and is allowing albumin to pass through. This is an oncotic pressure imbalance. So, based on a high or low serum ascites albumin gradient, we can categorize the causes of ascites. Ascites with a high gradient is usually caused by portal hypertension, meaning increased pressure in the portal vein which is defined as above approximately 10 millimeters of mercury. So things like cirrhosis, heart failure, Bud Chiari syndrome, and portal vein thrombosis are all causes here. On the other hand, a low serum ascites albumin gradient suggests causes such as infections like TB, peritoneal malignancy, which is often a metastasis from another cancer, perhaps ovarian cancer, pancreatitis, and nephrotic syndrome. So, for the diagnosis, when a patient arrives with ascites, on a physical exam, you may notice a shifting dullness, or in cases where the volume is larger, you'll be able to see the ascites. Diagnostic workup likely includes a complete blood count, liver function tests, and a coagulation panel, as well as an ultrasound to visualize the abdominal organs, as well as to estimate the volume of ascites and the pressure in the portal vein. Remember that in some cases, with a very small amount of acidic fluid, it may only become apparent when an ultrasound is performed. Of course, paracentesis and the serum ascites albumin gradient, as we already mentioned, are also options. The treatment of ascites has two main components. Obviously, we want to treat the underlying cause of the ascites, but we also want to provide symptomatic relief from the ascites itself and to prevent complications like sudden bacterial peritonitis and hepatorenal syndrome. Diuresis, meaning the urine production, and renal function both need to be measured. Diuresis is measured both by urine volume but also by weight loss, and the aim is to lose up to 0.5 kg per day or 1 kg a day if they have peripheral edema as well. High serum ascites albumin gradient cases are first put on a diet that is salt restricted. 
Diuretics are also given, specifically the use of aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone, to prevent excess sodium reabsorption. Patients may also be placed on furosemide. Paracentesis may also be performed, but it can cause the ascites to reform quickly. This is why albumin is often infused at the same time. Surgery is usually the last resort, ranging from a transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, known as TIPS, all the way to a liver transplant. Low serum ascites albumin gradient cases usually do not respond well to diuretics or salt restriction, and the treatment is therefore mainly repeated paracentesis and the removal of the underlying cause.